Uh, now we'll, we'll uh, continue on the part two of module five, thermochemistry. And as you can see, there's another example here. Uh, we are always on the calorimeter still. Uh, we have 2.56 grams of ethanol was combusted in a uh, palm calorimeter and the heat obtained is that uh, heat of the value of the heat is 6.53 kilojoules initial temperature is 24 find the final temperature well it turns out to be if you look at the whole thing here the uh, the methanol uh, uh, the ethanol is oxidized to co2 and h2o so the same thing we did before uh, this one should be really not nickel, but it should be uh, methanol. So heat is lost by methanol, heat gained by H2O. Set the whole thing up here, set up the whole thing. And it looks like the uh, heat, you know, the heat is, is uh, obtained from the combustion of, of, uh, of ethanol is equal the heat of H2O and we call it even combustion, uh, heat of combustion, heat of reaction, and is given as a mass multiplied by sp specific heat of ethanol multiplied by delta T. So it's the question is find the final temperature. It's given to us that the heat is given to us the heat. So the heat is here, the value of the heat, and it has to be transferred into joules from kilojoules. Then we have the mass here, correct? And we have, if we have the mass, then we have the specific heat of the ethanol. We assume it to be H2O, specific heat. Then we have T final minus T initial. The T initial is given to us to be 24. Set the whole thing up here with the numbers and work it out. So, and then you can, you can calculate the T final. The T final is coming to be 37.0 grams. Again, the kilojoules has to be converted into into joules the uh, specific heat of ethanol is assumed to be the specific heat of h2o the mass is given of ethanol and the initial temperature of ethanol is given so we can calculate the final temperature of ethanol now if you look at this example the same thing here uh, when a uh, 100 grams of a sample of methane is combusted, it's burned in a, in a bomb calorimeter, of course, in presence of oxygen. The temperature changes from T initial to T final, and this is the, and this is the amount of heat is, is uh, given off, it's exothermic reaction, combustion is always exo, uh, exothermic reaction. And it's asked what the specific heat of methane. Well, just set it up here. The heat of combustion is given to us, which is 2200 joules, correct, divided by the mass of, of the uh, 100 grams of methane, and the delta T is, is 31, 31 minus 21 is 10 grade uh, Celsius difference. Divide the whole thing and the specific heat will turn out to be 2.2 um, to joule per grams centigrade Celsius. So you divide 2,200, correct, uh, by 100, and then by by 10, so you get 2.2 joules per gram centigrade Celsius, specific heat of methane. Let's go further and look. Now we have a combustion of glucose. The glucose, this is the formula of glucose here. And we combusted uh, 3.12 with the same bomb calorimeter. Uh, technique the temperature of the calorimeter that's the initial that's the final of the uh, recorded temperature in the in the uh, bomb calorimeter the calorimeter contains seven, uh, 775 gram of h2o uh, and the specific heat of the calorimeter itself is 893 joule per centigrade celsius how much heat is produced by the combustion of the glucose sample? Well, it turns out to be the heat of combustion of the heat of the reaction is equal because the heat is produced by 
by reaction is absorbed by the by the H2O and by the bomb colorimeter itself. So it will be the sum of both. It will be what? The sum of both. That's the heat of the reaction. So let's calculate this one first. Um, this one is we have 775 grams of H2O. Specific heat of H2O is this. This is the mass of H2O. And the difference for initial and then final is 23.8. Uh, initial and the final is 35.6 makes subtract those and these delta t this is for h2o for the bomb a calorimeter is we have the heat capacity of the is 893 that's the heat capacity of the uh, bomb calorimeter then this heat here you multiply it by the delta t correct to get the, how many joules so we have this one here from the bomb calorimeter heat and this is heat from the uh, h2o you add them up and they will be and then divide them by because it's as it's as how much heat was produced so we can add them up in joules or we can add them up in kilojoules 48.8 kilojoules uh correct uh, when 3.12 grams of glucose was burned Another example. Uh, now we are finishing the the uh, the calorimeter here. We are now going to look at another topic, enthalpy, enthalpy, which we said always the heat or the energy itself. So um, the uh, enthalpy is given the the symbol H, and when the heat is absorbed or gained under conditions of constant pressure then the change of the of the heat is called enthalpy so this is very important the pressure has to be constant then the change of the heat is called enthalpy at constant pressure the enthalpy is under uh, constant pressure condition will equal to the sum of internal energy plus the product of pressure and the volume as we turned out the, the product of pressure and the volume tends to be work w so now let's see here the uh, enthalpy which is the heat at constant pressure equal the sum of internal energy plus the product of pressure multiplied by the volume and the pressure is constant the volume can vary so this is the work itself the change in enthalpy will equal the change of internal energy and the volume correct and the change in volume so if you look at this the change delta h now we uh, we uh, introduce ourselves with delta means change the change in enthalpy will be the change in internal energy plus a product of the pressure multiplied by the change uh, in volume at constant pressure the um, the internal energy what do we mean by internal energy of the system the internal energy of a system is recognized as a random unorganized motion of molecules correct this is a random unorganized motion of the molecules within within the system itself so the total in, uh, uh, internal energy includes includes too many uh, types of energies potential energy kinetic energy and it is the sum of all the microscopic energies such as translation, uh, trans, uh, translational in kinetic energy, vibrational, rotational, kinetic energy, and, and so on. So sum of all the energies within uh, the system. During a system change, and this is very important, the internal energy will change. And the internal energy can be transferred from the system to the surrounding. Correct? Energy is transferred into the system, correct, from the surrounding, when the system is gaining energy heat from the surrounding itself, or when the surrounding is doing work on the system. So, condition. Energy is transferred into the system, correct, that's uh, in case of an endothermic reaction, then that will, that will happen when the system is gaining energy, Q, the heat Q, from the surrounding, or when the surrounding itself is doing work on the system. 
On the other hand, if the energy is transferred out of the system, exothermic reaction, then when the system is losing energy, heat, Q, to the surrounding, or when the system is doing work on the surrounding. So this is, you have exothermic, then you have work from the system on the surrounding. You have endothermic is work done from the surrounding on the system itself. So then we have the, the product of P delta multiplied by delta V represent the work. That's what I said, W. With the V, W is positive. Then the B, uh, B the delta V terms is equal to minus W. So this is the formula we have to uh, then put it in and replace the uh, change. So we can replace by substitution. The change of enthalpy B will equal the change of the internal energies minus work, minus work, which is this one here, B delta V. So, and we can introduce ourselves to new. We have the uh, delta change, the molar enthalpy change. The molar enthalpy change, delta HM, is defined as the enthalpy change per mole of the substance. Okay, anytime you get the molar, then it has to mole, there has to be a mole in, involved. And it's very important here, and the enthalpy is a state function. It means what? It means it does not depend on the what? On the bath. It does not depend on the bath. If the system moves from one state to another state, the enthalpy change is independent of the bath between the two states of the system. It does not depend on the bath. Correct? At the end of the day, when you look at this at Hess's law later on at the end of this uh, module, you will we will have to add, regardless of whatever states or, or steps is the, the reaction is going, you will have to add up all those uh, energies in each steps. So it does not really, really depend on one step or two or three. So the combustion reaction of methane yields this amount. The combustion reaction yields this amount of uh, energy, correct? Or heat. So this is a combustion reaction, this, this amount, for one mole, per mole. This is per mole. Now, if two moles of methane are used, then what will happen the the com combustion heat? What will be the combustion heat? Well, look at this. You have to, multi to multiply everything by two. So I multiply this by two, multiply this by two, this is by two, and this is two multiply two, come four. And then you multiply your value here by two, which is, then it comes up to be minus, it's an exothermic combustion, as I said, combustion is always um, um, exothermic reaction. So it comes divided by two. So multiply by two, so not divide by two, multiply by two, so the amount is of the heat is double. The amount of the heat is double. Let's go further here. Um, when 1.50 gram magnesium reacts with 50.0 ml, correct, we have magnesium react with HCl to produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas, correct, hydrogen goes up, bubbling up from the reaction, and if I have 150 gram of magnesium, and I have amount of HCl given to me, 50 ml, and the molarity of HCl 0.85, I get the heat is equal to 5.5 kilojoule out of this uh, single displacement reaction, which is part of redox reaction. And the question is to de determine the enthalpy change, and that's what we have, per, per mole of magnesium reacting for the reaction and write the complete thermochemical equation. This is the, this is the equation here, correct? And I'm not interested in the HCl, the amount of HCl, or the stuff is given to me. The heat is there, kilojoule. But I have here what the, the, the amount of magnesium I use. I convert the amount grams into moles, and I divide, it by the, uh, divide the heat by the moles, I get kilojoule per moles. Let's do it here. So I have one mole of magnesium, correct, will give me, here it is, 5.5 kilojoule divided by 0 0.067 moles of magnesium. Now, if you look at this, from where we get this one here, this one I get it from converting the grams, 
of magnesium divided by the atomic mass of magnesium. This is the atomic mass of magnesium. I get this amount. Correct? When I get this amount, then I divide this here by this amount here. So 5.5 kilojoule divided by 0.617 moles after converting these grams into moles. I get 83.5 kilojoule per mole. Now, if I put the heat together, that's a that's a uh, exothermic reaction. Magnesium solid HCl ga uh, aqueous magnesium chloride is aqueous plus plus hydrogen. I can put delta H here minus correct 83.5 kilojoule per mole. And this is an exothermic reaction. So let's look at here. The heat absorbed or gained will equal delta H equal Q. The heat absorbed or gained will equal delta H or Q. If there is no expansion work on the system and the pressure is constant, and this is a conditional, when delta H equal Q, we have to have the pressure is constant and there is no work uh, uh, experience on the system by the surrounding. So with the help of the formula delta H equal Q, the process of exothermic or endothermic process will be determined. In other words, it's very important. Let's highlight this together. Let's highlight all this together here. So let's highlight this. It's very important and we'll go and read it together. In another word, what we have, if the system, correct, is, is undergoing uh, endoth uh, endothermic process, the system is gaining heat from the surrounding, correct? And Q will be greater than zero. That's because it's gaining heat. And delta H will be the same thing, greater than zero as well. In the, in the, in, in case of we have the, uh, in case we have the, uh, in case we have the, uh, in case we have an exothermic process, the system is giving off, losing, heat to the surrounding and Q will be less than zero and delta H, the enthalpy change will be less than zero as well. The effect of temperature on enthalpy. So we, we have learned this one here. Temperature, if the temperature increases, the molecular interaction will increase by increasing temperature. The internal energy of the system as well will increase. So it depends on the temperature. If the temperature increases, the molecular interaction will increase and the internal energy of the system will increase as well. So if we have a constant pressure, then this, the specific heat at constant pressure will be delta H divided by delta P. So here it is, the, uh, the uh, Delta heat will be the heat divided by delta T will give us called something called C at constant pressure. So this means constant uh, the uh, specific heat at constant uh, pressure. So uh, the standard enthalpy now definition when we have standard enthalpy. Well, we have uh, we have standard enthalpy by definition when we are dealing with uh, one ATM and one molar of the system. So it says in, in IUBFC is one bar, which is 0 0.987 ATM. But in general, we use a standard uh, enthalpy at, recorded in the, in the literature as in one ATM and one molar concentration of the reactants. And the standard enthalpy given the O sign on the top of it. So it means this is this is a standard. So the example of standard uh, heat of combustion calculation. Let's look at the, the calculations here. This is a combustion. This is again is an exothermic reaction. Delta H is negative, and this is an exothermic reaction. And if we have 1.5 liter of methane is used for combustion, calculate the standard enthalpy of combustion. 
we use one 1.5 liter so the we said the standard conditions are one atm and one molar correct so it's given to you the molar mass of methane is 16.0 gram per mole and the density of methane is 0.72 gram per liter we need those two because otherwise we can't we can't uh, convert the liter into 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 uh, moles correct that's the whole idea to come all the way from liters into moles we have to get uh, the uh, the density of methane to get rid of the liters with the liters so here the liters sorry the liters the liters cancels out we have to get rid of the grams you have to divide by the molar mass of methane carbon is 12 hydrogen is one four of those 16 so 16 grams the grams cancels out with the grams here now i have the mole here where i need it then i have 802.3 kilojoule per mole so the mole with the mole here cancels out and the answer is is this after doing all the calculations including all the numbers and the values there standard intel b of formation the standard intel b of formation is recognized as the change of intel b when one mole of a substance in a standard state 1 atm pressure and 25 degrees celsius or 298.15 kelvin so the standard intel b formation again this is will be is recognized as a change in enthalpy when one mole of a substance in a standard state is formed. What is the standard state? One atm and one one atm of pressure and temperature is room temperature of twenty five degrees Celsius, which is two hundred ninety eight point one five Kelvin, from its pure element at the sa under the same condition. So that's the definition. It has to be a uh, standard condition, 1 atm, 25 centigrade Celsius, or 20, 20, 20, 298 uh, Kelvin. And it has this come has coming from the, the uh, one using one mole from its pure element and this, under the same condition. Let's look at this. The equation for this, and you have to really do, to recognize this and maybe I put it in a flash card and to review it on and off the uh, standard uh, the standard uh, enthalpy of reaction the standard enthalpy of the reaction because it has an o here look at the o here here means the o means standard the standard heat uh, of the reaction equal will equal the sum of all the the standard enthalpy formation of the product minus the sum of all the standard intel formation of of the reactants so remember this is very important so so look at this every time in a flashcard so you you need it to calculate the, the heat the standard heat of the reaction and remember that the the change in intel b is considering the intel b as state function state function mean does not depend on the path Example, consider two molecules, chlorine gas and chlorine liquid at room temperature, 298.15 Kelvin. Which substance has a non-zero standard enthalpy formation? Well, if you look like this, chlorine gas is most stable. Therefore, chlorine gas will have lower enthalpy. Delta H will be closer to zero or zero will be zero correct this more stable if whenever the the molecule is stable then it will be zero if chlorine is least stable so therefore it will have higher enthalpy delta h is higher than and has non-zero value that's always the case anytime i have most stable form of the molecule the state of it so it will have zero if it's not stable it will have non-zero value Let's look at this now, and uh, uh, sulfur dioxide, two molecules of it, or two moles, will react with one mole of oxygen to give us sulfur trioxide, two moles. Now it's asking, it's asking, what, calculate the delta, uh, delta heat of the reaction. 
will, will be the here we introduce the number of moles because we have here two and we have two here and we have here one understood not written so we have to introduce the number of moles the sum of all the uh, enthalpy formation standard enthalpy formation of the products multiplied by by the by their corresponding uh, more number of moles minus the uh, this the uh, the enthalpy formation standard enthalpy formation of the reactants multiplied by their corresponding uh, number of moles correct of the that's for the reactant and this for the product np for the for the rea for the products and nr for the reactants now let's look at this here is the from the table i'll show you the table uh, in, in couple minutes so here is the table we have delta s formation so3 is minus 395.2 uh, the so2 uh, delta h formation is minus 296 and delta h for oxygen stable gas zero so plug this in so the product is two two moles here two so3 formation correct the standard formation enthalpy for the product so3 minus minus the, re the reactant the reactance is two here for sulfur dioxide the enthalpy uh, uh, change the enthalpy uh, st standard enthalpy uh, formation of co2 and this is uh, in print this is the sum of those two plus the the enthalpy formation stand standard enthalpy formation of oxygen so and this is zero by the way so this is zero we know so then you put them here here it is the delta h of the reaction the enthalpy standard enthalpy of the reaction is this minus this minus the plus the oxygen oxygen is zero here oxygen is zero here as you see this is two multiplied by this and this minus this and you add all this up together and then you get minus uh, 198.2 kilojoule it's negative the answer the answer can be negative and therefore the reaction we can determine the reaction to be what exothermic reaction so this is combination reaction is synthesis this is an exothermic reaction because this value came to be negative okay so let's look at another example we have two no that's another combination reaction which is really redox reaction as well so delta h of the reaction uh, the same formula we have used the number of moles will come in in front of each product so we have two here we have two here similar to this so2 correct be a previous uh, example those value from the table we'll see the table in a couple of minutes so this is the table here so then just uh, the product minus the the formation standard uh, enthalpy of formation for the of the products multiplied by the corresponding number of moles minus the standard formation enthalpy of the reactants multiplied by their corresponding number of moles so here it is that's this one here so the products minus the reactants we have two no2 two moles multiplied by the delta h formation of no2 minus the sum here oxygen is already zero the sum of both two multiplied by no and the values are here we can use these values here we just plug all those values together here when you plug all the values you came up with the value negative 114.14 kilojoule and the reaction as well is exothermic reaction so this is exothermic reaction as well we can consider the reaction with oxygen pure oxygen uh, it's like combustion It's a combination reaction but combustion all the combustion reaction means you let the mat any matter react with oxygen we use the organic matter but we can use any other stuff here with pure oxygen the reaction will be exothermic so this is the table i just was talk to you talk about uh, this is here is the the condition 25 degrees which is 298 kelvin and 1 atm this is the the standard condition see this is the standard condition by which this measurement is, is taken and this is uh, for all 
uh, compounds and molecules there in this table and that's what we use for calculation those tables are, are given in um, in the literature and it's easy from the web as well can be obtained here the the same thing here standard enthalpy formation for atomic and uh, molecule uh, molecular ions so we have ions cation and ions polyatomic ions all these are here and then the the standard conditions are 25 degrees which is 298 and 1 atm one pressure of 1 atm so this this is just a table we can use the data whenever is needed so writing chemical equation for delta h of formation example how to write the equation for this this is an ether the commercial name is dimethyl ether dimethyl ether so how i can write delta h formation for it well it turns out to be i have two carbons one and two so two multiplied by carbon carbon from the table i have to use the value of solid and graphic graphite then i have one oxygen but oxygen comes always as a molecule O2 so I have to put half half of O2 is is one oxygen here I have three and three I have six hydrogens hydrogen comes as a molecule H2 so I have put three correct gas gas and this is solid graphite and that will give us what ether liquid liquid ether or dimethyl ether liquid so this this way I can write the delta H formation for this uh, for this compound. Let's take the other compound here. Let's take this number two. Well, how many carbon I have here? One, two, three. This compound here, uh, dimethyl ketone, which is really acetone. This is what this is an acetone, correct? This is an acetone. If you look, three carbons. So I have three carbon always solid and graphite how many oxygens i have i have one so oxygen is a molecule so i put half half multiplied by two giving me one oxygen how many hydrogen six here two multiplied by three make six and give me this uh, dimethyl ketone or acetone or two propanone okay let's go further uh, let's look evaluating an enthalpy of formation here we will be looking at hydrogen gas reacts ex uh, explosively with gases chlorine cl2 to form hydrogen chloride hcl what is the enthalpy change for the reaction of one mole this is very important of hydrogen with one mole of chlorine if both reactants and products are at the standard state condition one atm pressure one atmospheric pressure and 25 degrees celsius uh, temperature which is 298 kelvin the standard enthalpy formation is is giving to you is minus 92.3 kilojoule so this is the reaction here we set up all this nice reaction with the with all the information we need correct so we added this this is a combination or synthesis reaction correct we are adding up this is combination reaction synthesis a uh, part of the uh, um, big umbrella of called redox reaction so one mole of hydrogen will produce one mole of hydrogen here will produce what two moles of hcl and one mole of chlorine will produce two mole both of them produce two moles of HCl, correct? So if I look at the whole thing, uh, let's look at the whole thing, one mole of hydrogen multiplied by two mole of HCl divided by one mole of hydrogen, mole hydrogen, mole hydrogen cancels out, correct? So um, it said, what is the enthalpy change for the reaction for one mole of hydrogen with one mole of chlorine? So I have this one here. This is for the whole overall reaction here. Now I have how many? I have two moles of HCl for the whole reaction. Then I take the amount here, 92.3 per mole hydrogen, 
or by per mole HCl, correct? Per mole HCl multiplied by the cell. This is HCl, HCl. So the HCl, the HCl cancels out, and I have to multiply 92.3 multiplied by two. So it will be the amount will be doubled for HCl. For hydrogen will be the uh, will be this this amount, correct? Uh, the standard enthalpy for formation for HCl. No, for HCl is this. For hydrogen is will be uh, doubled. Yes, will will be doubled. Hess's law. This is the last topic of the chapter. Uh, Hess is, uh, Hess was a Russian chemist. Uh, this law was named after him in 1840. Hess law confirms that the uh, standard enthalpy is a state function which does not depend on the path of the chemical reaction. Hess's law states that the regardless of multiple steps of the reaction, the reaction can take the total enthalpy change for the reaction is the sum of all changes. Correct? And this is uh, very important. Now, it says here, we have calculate the enthalpy for the reaction Two carbon plus hydrogen, the solid carbon, hydrogen gas, uh, give you um, uh, C2H2. C2H2, this is acetylene or ethyne. So this is reaction here. We have to know how much is this. And then we, we were given three steps here. Look at this. Three equations will help us to get to calculate this total one. So we have three steps, three different paths, but then when we come to, to calculate, we'll add them up regardless what whatever the path might be. Correct? So we have, if you look here, C2H2, just by looking, inspecting. This is this is here is what? The product. But in this reaction here is the reactant. So your intuition will tell you you have to flip this equation, flip it for left, right, right, left. When you flip this, the sign will be what will change. The sign will be flipped. If it's minus, will be what will be positive. If it's positive, will be negative. Correct. This one here, if you look at this, carbon is here. So this one we, does not need any flip. Correct. Why? Because carbon in the in the left side. Okay. However, we have two here. So then I have to do this equation here, uh, not flipping. This one is flip. This one I have to flip it upside down. So, but this one here, I have to multiply it by two to get the two carbons, correct? And hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, it looks like there is okay, correct? And then after that, I have to, um, I have to look uh, to add those those equation and then the oxygen will take its will take itself by, from the from the subtraction and addition of all the oxygen there. So let's look at here how we did. The first equation we have to I said to flip it. The second one no flip but multiply by two. Yeah, that's what I told you. That's we are right. We are on the right track. The third one do nothing. We are not. We did nothing. So. By doing this, we flipped so that the sign is changed, correct? This one multiplied by two, the, ta the number is doubled. And now if you add them up, you get the, the, the value. If we add all this up, we will get to the, we'll get to the value, correct? So, and the oxygen will take it care of itself here. In the left is five, this is left, five, five over two. Here is two in the in this left side, and the right side is five over two, and here is one and a half. Uh, I mean half of, of oxygen. So you add those two here minus this, so the oxygen will take care of it itself, so it it's vanish out. Correct. So if you look at the whole thing now, checking uh, it can be. So this is the whole thing here. The two CO two from the first and second equation when you add them up. H2O, the third and the first and the third equation. And uh, this one will add itself up. So if I go back and look, the CO2 is there, 
correct? The CO2 is there from the first equation. And we have, and then the CO2 here will cancel the first two and two here. They are canceling themselves out. Here it is, sorry. That's out and this is out. And this one is here, that's what we need. H2O here, with H2O here, this is left here, this is right, cancels out. Only thing is oxygen, here is, is in, the, in the right 5O2. And here 2 plus 1 and a half, that's 5O2, so they will cancel oxygen themselves out together. Because we have to add, we have to add both those oxygens here and subtract them from 5 over 2, which is the same value that cancels out. Correct? So let's go look. And therefore, we sum all of this will be the whole sum here. And the value will be plus 226.7 kilojoule. Let's, let's look at another example. Calculate the enthalpy of the following chemical reaction, which is uh, the carbon disulfide liquid plus three moles of oxygen gas will give us CO2, CO2 gas, carbon dioxide gas plus carbon di uh, sulfur dioxide gas, two moles of it. Now this is given from the table, correct? This is given from the table, all these equations here if you look. Now what you can tell me about this, this is my my uh, my reactant, the carbon disulfide, this one here, my reactant. Where is it? Where is it? You look, aha, uh -huh, this one here, my product. This one, flip. This one, flip. I have to flip this because this is my product here, but here's my reactant. Correct? And then I need my CO2 to be this one here, my, my CO2 is in my product side, this is good, keep, keep here, we keep this one here, we have to keep this one, because that's my product, my product the same thing, now SO2, where is SO2, aha, uh -huh. SO2 in my what, look at this SO2, my product, is my product, however it has two here, so this one here, keep but multiply, multiply by two. Let's read here. Leave equation one untouched. So this one we kept it untouched, correct? Because of the product CO2. Multiply the second question by two, correct? Because we have two, uh, two uh, SO2. So we have to multiply by two. Flip the third one. That's what it said, flip. And then by doing this, let's look. Very good. The first one we kept it as is, we multiply the second by two, correct? By two here, this one by as is, multiply by two, and this one flip. This one, we change the, the value here. So if you look up, the value was plus here, the third equation, now it is negative. Then add all those steps here, minus 393, minus 593 plus 87 point something, and you add all those up together, correct? The carbon and the silver is, uh, they, they cancel themselves, yeah. So the here carbon with the carbon out, and the silver with the silver cancels out, and we, our reaction will just remain as is. So you add them up and you get 1,075 uh, kilojoule per mole. Let's look at another example. Given the following data, we have three here, data together. Find delta H of the, of the reaction, of course, of this. So, again, carbon is solid graphite plus oxygen gas plus CO2 gas, correct? Using this, this, uh, this type of three equations we got given. So, carbon is our what? Our reactant, where is carbon? Aha, uh -huh, carbon is here, it's product. So this one here, immediately flip. Correct? Because I need this one here to be in, in the in the in the pro in the in the reactant side. This is what here. Okay, I flip this one here. 
Then I have to look at CO2. Aha, uh -huh, look at this. CO2 here is a product, here is a reactant. Uh-uh. Philip, this one. Philip, correct? I have to flip it, means the sign, I have to watch the sign will be changed, correct? Now I have to look if I'm missing any of of uh, anything else I can I can do. You can you can verify. So I need the oxygen is oxygen is coming. Uh, where is oxygen is here? O2. Let's look at this. Here I have because I flipped this one here. Remember I flipped this one here. Three oxygens in the reactant side and and here is two oxygen. Yeah, let me see. Uh, yeah, I have I have to to watch. We have two CR, so I have to multiply this one here. By by the way, uh, I have to multiply this one here. Let's look at this. I have to multiply this one here by two, so to make to make sure that the oxygen will come out as O2. So let's look at, it, at what we did. I think the same thing we did. So the first equation, we flip it, correct? On the right. The second equation, we will not, we'll not flip it. We divide it through, uh, through by two. So that's what I said, we have to watch for the oxygen because oxygen is three here and O is one. So we have to have divided just by, by, by two to get SRO, the strontium oxide, so we can then uh, cancel the SRO. So this is divided by by two. So here it is. This one is the first one is flip, correct? The second one no flip, but divide by two. No flip, but divide by two. That's so. That's uh, why divide by two because we have to get rid of the two here of strontium oxide because we have to cancel this with this, correct? Because we have. Um, we have, uh, we have, um, we have flipped the first one. We have flipped the first one, correct? We have flipped the first one because of CO2 being a reactant, we need it to be products. And then C, the third equation, we flip it as well. We have to flip it as well because of the fact we have the, the graphite is, is a product we needed to be reacted. So to have to flip, so we have to flip the, the third one, the, the third one as well. So, and then when we flip it, we have to multiply to divide it by, by two, since we need to cancel only one uh, strontium carbonate. So, let's look at, at what we have here. When we apply everything, we get this one here now, the first one here, flipped. Then we divided the second one, if you look, divide by two. This one divide by two. This one's flip. This one divide by two, correct? And here we divided by two as well. So divided by flip and divided by two, correct? We flip it and then divided by two. And then at the end, we have to add all those Equa uh, amount because whenever you flip or you divide by two, let's go up. If I divide, if I divided the fr this one here by two, here is the here is the answer. Correct means you have to divide the value by two. Not only the the number of moles you divide, but you divide even the value as well. When you flip the value, then the sign will change. The sign will change. Okay, so now everything is, is, is very nice. Serenium carbonate with serenium carbonate cancel out. Serenium oxide with serenium oxide cancel out. Serenium solid with serenium solid. The only left is this, correct? And the product is this. And the reactant is, is, is this here, here. You add it with the oxygen, sorry, with the oxygen, this will come to the equation which is, uh, this is the, the equation itself. So, and when you add all those up, you end up with the value of minus 394 kilojoule, and the reaction said to be uh, ex exothermic reaction. 
Now, another example, that's the last example, uh, given the following information. So you have uh, those three here, correct? All those three here, equation. And we are looking for this. Now you can tell me what we have to do. Uh, first of all, I have NO2, nitrogen dioxide, as what? As my reactant. And here is my product. My intuition will tell me what? Something is has to be flipped. So I'm flipping this. So this one here, flip, correct? Because I have to, this is my reactant, not product. When I flip, then the sign will change. Correct? What next? I have H2O. Let's look where is H2O. Well, it turns out to be H2O is here. So H2O is here. So I'm not worried about the H2O. So it looks like, okay, I mean, this is my H2O. Correct? And this is H2O. However, the H2O is a uh, 2 and here is 1. So keep, I will keep it because the H2O is my reactant. But then I have to divide it by by 2. I can divide it by 2, correct? To get the H2O as here. Correct? So if you look at the, um, at the whole thing here, here I have 3NO2, and here I have only 2NO2. That's a, the third one I have to be careful because the NO2, the, uh, although I've, I'm flipping it, but I am running into, if I flip this one here, I'm running into the, the, I have to watch for the oxygen. Here, five oxygen, and the oxygen here, and the oxygen here. So we, the first one, we said we have to flip it. Now, if we flip the first one, then we have the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the H2O, but this one here, because the NO is the other side, look at the NO here. Look at this one here. So, and here when we flip it, it will come the other side. So, it looks to me, this one here, we have to be careful about it. So, we have to flip it as well. So, number three. Number three here. Flip. So, I want to get rid of flip. Flip. Why I'm flipping it? Because uh, this, when I flip the first one, the NO will be uh, as, a broad, uh, as a product. The NO here is a product. It will be too many. I cannot get rid of them. So the NO has to be the other side. So let's look here what they analyze it. First equation, flip. Correct? And then you divide it by half. That's what I told you to, to make sure that we have, we have NO2 here. Correct? We have NO2 here. So NO2 here. So 2NO2. So you divide by half. You get NO2. So that... To give, you divide by, by not and a half, by three half. You, divide, you multiply by three and a half, so to get three NO2. Sorry. So, to get to, to, the, to the, the three NO2, you flip the first one, and then you multiply it by three and a half. Three and a half. Why? To get, to get into, uh, to get into the three NO2. So, this one is very important here. So here it is. Divide by three and a half to get the three and or two. The second equation you divide by two. Correct? You divide by two because H2O is one. And here's two, you divide by two. And you keep it as is, you don't change it. The third one you have to flip it to get rid of NO2. To get rid of what? NO2. Uh, NO, sorry, not NO2, NO, to get rid of it. So now, if you look at this, step one, uh, the step one above, puts three and a half oxygen, that's for the oxygen, on the right, correct? Three and a half oxygen on the right. Step B puts um, uh, five point, uh, five half on the left, and step one C, put two over two on the right. So if you add them up, that will take care of the oxygen. So if you add the whole thing up, uh, uh, therefore, it will take take care of oxygen. So A and C give us five and a half on the right. Cancel out with the five and a half on the left. So 
Now, if you look at the whole thing, we, we did this one here, three and a half here, correct? And multiply by whole, we did three and a half, remember? Multiply three and a half, so we get three here, and three of this, and three and a half oxygen. Then we, uh, we did with this one here, multiply by, uh, multiply by the, uh, by, uh, we said, uh, let me go up. The second one, we divided by two, correct? So we divide this one by two, we have this one here, oxygen, and we get all this together to give you this one here, correct? And uh, then the, the last one here, just, we have the last one, and I think I, we, uh, if you recall, we flip that, that the third one, we flip it. We did, we did flip that, the third one. We, we did flip the third one. So, and if you look the, the whole, the whole thing here, so the oxygen is here, and the oxygen is here, and the oxygen is here. 502 in the in the in the left and if you add those one is five over two cancels out so this is just the step three the axiom so you add all those up together changing flipping changing the sign dividing by three and a half whatever or divide by, by or multiply by half so all together here and this with the equation will give you uh this one here plus no and the the amount is 137 uh, kilojoule. It's just it needs to just watch, watch out for the products versus the reactant. It switch sw switch them around. When you flip, you have to switch the sign. When you multiply by this amount, you have to multiply the amount of the heat by the same amount you added to. Um, thank you very much for your listening.